everyone and welcome to another art lesson with me, Mr. Richardson. This activity is for my grade two students and this is the third video in the series of our ish pictures. So today we're gonna to be starting to look at a blob. Now you may know what a blob is, you may not know what a blob is, but I consider a blob something that's jelly-like, that is organic in shape. So if you're not sure what organic means, it means that it's not a geometric shape like a square or a triangle or a circle or a rectangle, but something that you can freehand draw. So if you think like a blob of mud that you've dropped on the ground or you've spilt your yogurt snack perhaps or you've spilt your drink on the bench, something like that is kind of just wiggly and not necessarily with straight lines, something that you have made up yourself, the your organic shape that you just come up with off the top of your head. So that is what you're going to be starting with as your stimulus for your ish blob monster. So you have got a few different choices of what you can use for materials to create your blob monster today. If you've only got textures, then that is great. You can uh, just stick with that. If you have got paints at home, like watercolor paint, watercolor pencils would work too. Or if you've got acrylic paints too, then you can have a go at those. Or if you are feeling adventurous, then you can make a very, very small amount of coffee, if you've got it, or tea. So you have to get an adult's help with making that. I've just got a tiny, tiny little bit in the bottom of my mug so it's not a lot of water because I want to keep a lot of the colour in the mug. I don't want it to be too watered down so I can then see it on my paper. So you can try that if you want to but make sure you check with an adult beforehand. So you've got three different options for what you want to um, use for your blob on your paper. So of course you'll need a sheet of paper and a fine liner or a writing pen would be great too. All right, let's get started. Okay, so if you have going to use the simple version with the texture, all you need to do is just draw a line, organic line shape, takes you all of two seconds on your page. And you can either choose to shade it with texture or you can add a few little extra lines just to make it interesting. And then you can shade it in with colored pencils if you choose. So the reason why you can use colored pencils is it's lighter than the texture. So I'm holding my pencils kind of sideways. I'm not holding it straight up and down like I'm writing on the very point. If I use the side of the, the lead, I tend to get a smoother shade color on the page. So it helps to have a fairly sharp pencil when you're doing this because you're using the side of the lead, not the end. Okay, so can shade it in like that and see that there's a contrast between the texture and the pencil there. And then once you've done that, you can turn it into a monster of some sort. You can add your features like the eyes, a scary mouth with teeth, and uh, it could be anything, claws, hair, horns, feelers, and antennas, all that sort of stuff. Okay, that's a really basic version. If you want to go the next step and you do have different art supplies at home, then you can use paint or watercolour pencils. So watercolour pencils are great because you can draw and then blend it with some water. It looks like watercolour paint. I'm going to show you how to do the watercolour paint version. So I dip my brush in the water, make sure it's really loaded up, loaded up with water. And then with my paint, I'm going to pat it. So with watercolour paints, with your brush, you want to treat it like a cat. You want to Pat it gently over and over one direction. So you see I'm not pushing and scrubbing like I'm trying to scrub a stain off the floor. The more times you pat it on um, these watercolor paints, then the more intense 
the color is going to be. So if you only patch it a little bit, it's going to be very light. And then with my blob, I've got a random shape there. I've kind of run out of water, so I'm going to dip it in again and give it a little bit more of a pat with plenty of water. And I can expand my blob just a little bit more. Okay, doesn't have to be anything in particular. Just a random organic shape. So if you imagine that you had some of this very red color jelly and you scooped a hand of the um, handful of jelly out of the bowl and plopped it onto the bench, what would it look like? Kind of something like that. Okay, so if you're using the paint version, of course you'll need to let that dry completely before you add your details to turn it into a monster. Then the next step, so the next step, I'm going to do this on a new piece of paper. I'm going to use some watercolour paper because I've got that handy. I have just put a few sprinkles of coffee granules in here and a tablespoon or two of water, so it's just enough to cover the bottom. And I got this inspiration from a few pictures where I literally pick up a teaspoon of this coffee mixture and drop it onto my page. Now, of course, it just looks like some splatters on there, but you can see that it's my organic shape there. It's just sitting there. A few extra little dots there. And there's like the little sprays out the side there. So there's not much else you can do with that at the moment. That's going to need to completely dry, but you're going to get some interesting patterns. You could always try and shift the paper a little bit to let the liquid travel a little bit if you really wanted to. Up to you, I wouldn't want to do too much. Make sure you've got something underneath your work just to protect the surface. All right, so still a fair bit of liquid there. I don't need any more than a teaspoon of liquid. So as I've mentioned before, two teaspoons in the cup is probably more than you're going to need. You can always have a couple of goes with some different paper. Probably would work just as well on the back of some um, cereal box cardboard because that's nice and thick um, and it will sit on top as opposed to printer paper which is really thin and it will probably soak in quite quickly but make the paper a fair, um, fairly soggy. So you can experiment with some recycled materials. It doesn't have to be fancy art paper like mine. It's whatever you have got at home. But of course, you will need to let that dry completely before you can do anything with it. Just like with the watercolor paints. So I'm gonna let this sit here for a little bit to dry and I'll be back in a moment to go on with the next step of this blob ish monster. Okay, so I've finally let this blob dry. I actually had to wait quite a while for that coffee to dry on the page. I'm not sure whether it's because of the amount of liquid or the type of paper. So it depends how patient you are. You can try this one. You'll have to wait several hours. You could also try um, maybe after it's dried a little bit, blotting it with some paper towel or you can try blowing it with a hairdryer. Although if you do that, it will spread out a little bit more. Could give you some more interesting results. So you can play around with what you want to do, or you can just stick with the watercolour or texture and pencil option with your blob. Now the next step is that you need to, again, like your other-ish pictures, like with your eyeball one and your squiggle one, is turn it around and look at it from different perspectives. See if anything jumps out at you and what you can turn that blob and all these little lines and dots around it and what you could turn it into. You have to get your thinking hat on and switch your imagination on and wonder what you could turn this into. And I think I have a bit of an idea of what I'm gonna turn this into. 
So again, you can use grey lead pencil. Um, probably best if you're not quite sure what you're going to turn it into. That way you can sketch around and then rub it out if you need to um, rub out any mistakes or if you change your mind. And then you can also go over with a black marker if you want to or use a, a black um, fine liner or a black writing pen to add your details to your blob-ish picture. So, I'm going to start drawing my blob-ish monster. And here is my finished product. And there is my blob-ish monster. So, I turn these spots here into some eyeballs with some fuzzy hair on top. And they're kind of like on long stalks, a bit like a snail. And then this part here is a round domed body. And I so saw these little bits here is kind of like lots of tentacles. It's just got splat on the ground. And then I turn this dark patch here, kind of looked a little bit like teeth. So I drew the teeth. If you've got something at home like a white pencil or a white crayon or oil pastel, then they're really good for sort of blocking out things that you need to be white on top of the dark parts like um, teeth or parts of the eyeballs. But have a play around. But keep your materials pretty simple. So stick with your grey lead first. Try and press really lightly until you know exactly where you want to put it. So the general rule is press light until you get it right. And then you can go over it heavier. So you can see here I've gone with heavier, darker lines once I know exactly for sure what I wanted to put there. And then you can press harder. But it's really hard to rub out if you press hard at the very beginning. So start light and then go over it again darker when you know for sure. So here is my blob-ish monster that I did with my spilt coffee on my paper. So remember you've got your different options. You've got your texture outline with your shading with the coloured pencil if you want to stick with basic materials. If you've got paint like acrylic or watercolour paint then you can use those. Or you could use the coffee in the water um, method. Now I've got a couple of other examples that I can show you of how I've turned my blobs into ish drawings. So it's really up to your own imagination of what you can turn it into. So don't forget, you can turn your paper around and have a look at what springs to mind and what comes from your imagination. So this monster here kind of looks like, I don't know, a little bit like a, a seahorse of some sort, I guess. A little bit creepy, a little bit like a, more like a slug, I guess, with a little hairdo there and some teeth but hey you can add anything to your blob ish monster so think about the features it could have hair tentacles eyeballs claws um webbed feet there's lots of things so i'd love to see what you can come up with with your blob ish pictures have fun with that and i'll see you next time